I'm Bart Starr. I was the 17th round draft choice of the Green Bay Packers back in 1956. If the basketball coach at the University of Alabama had not been a good friend of the personnel director of the Packers, I probably would not have been drafted at all. The late round pick struggled early on and didn't leave much of an impression on teammates. We didn't know about Bart Starr for the first couple of years. Bart was like methane gas, colorless, odorless, tasteless, virtually invisible. I had come from a military family. Because of that, I was probably a little on the, uh, the meek, mild side as a result of my father <laughs> pushing us down all the time. Starr's career took a decidedly different turn when a new father figure entered his life. He brought a number of us in to acquaint us with his offensive system. And after about an hour, we took a break. I ran downstairs, grabbed the pay phone there in the Packer office building, and called my wife. And all I said to her was, honey, we're going to begin to win. I had to earn his trust and respect during that first year he was there, and actually into the second year. If you go from Brown, if you go to Brown, you're going to get Zeke, and you can be able to throw that four pass right into it. Well, in other words, 68 goals, second and seven. Well, that's and good. I think this is great because we didn't have any force out there. They didn't. And from then on, uh, it was it was easy. That trust was established during countless hours in the classroom. When we were getting ready to go to meetings, I could hardly wait. Now, this may sound a little bit corny to someone, but it's not. You could hardly wait to get into a meeting and listen to his comments. Bart was the perfect extension of Lombardi on the field. Bart was on the same page with Lombardi. Lombardi trusted Bart with his offense. <laughs> he was the only one he trusted with it. He was a quiet guy, and he was an unassuming guy, and he was a polite guy, and he was a nice guy, but he had a lot of steel in him. He had a lot of fire in him. The prize pupil wasn't always the teacher's pet. Coach Lombardi had a couple of mechanisms that he used to warn him about when he was pushing too far. One of them uh, was Bart Starr. Only after an interception in practice one day, and he really just blistered me in practice about this, I went in to see him in the office and I said, Coach, I can take the, the chewing. That's not a problem. I said, you will apologize to me in the privacy of your office. I said, would you please just chew me out in there as well so that I can maintain the respect of our players? He never, ever said anything to me in front of them again. While there was no questioning his leadership, some regarded Starr as merely a manager of Lombardi's run-based offense that paved the way to NFL titles in 1961, 62, and 65. I wasn't asked to carry the team that much with a passing game. When you have Horning and Taylor in the backfield behind you, they were fabulous. That all changed in 1966. With Horning and Taylor in decline, number 15 earned MVP honors, while leading Green Bay to a 12-2 record and a shot at another NFL championship. With the defense struggling, Starr threw for over 300 yards and four scores. His biggest play, however, never registered in the box score. Starr pumps once, fires up the middle, the pass is complete to Boyd Dollar for the touchdown. And Dollar was belted hard in the end zone by Mike Gector. Our most combative guy on offense was Jimmy Taylor. The instant that Taylor starts looking for Gector, which could have very easily gotten him ejected, number 15 is right in Jimmy Taylor's face. And Bart is just guiding him all the way. And when he gets to the sideline, you listen carefully, you hear, out of way, Bart. The most underestimated aspect of Bart Starr is the fact that he's a great leader tough as nails. Didn't say much, but when it was necessary, he did what had to be done. Two weeks later in the first Super Bowl, stars shined again, garnering MVP honors. As the Green Bay Packers on their way to the first Super Bowl championship. 1966, it was probably the best season that I ever individually enjoyed. 1967 was a completely different experience. Injuries and age had taken their toll, but in the frigid setting of the Ice Bowl, Starr would return to form by capping off a 68-yard game-winning drive. Packers trying for the go-ahead score. Starr begins the count. Takes the snap. He has the season had 
they've been kind of difficult for Biden. It's been real frustrating at the early part of the season. The climax, like that, of scoring the thing was just, again, I think a great sense of relief for him. I know Bart was crying and very, very happy. In Super Bowl II, the overachiever from Alabama earned MVP honors yet again. Anyone can perform and there's almost no pressure. But when everything is on the line, when you're in the ultimate game of the year, that's the time, in my opinion, that you see who can play. One of my favorite quotes is from William Jennings Bryan, and I think it sums up how I feel about my career and what I was able to accomplish when he said that destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It is not something to be wished for. It is something to be attained.